welcome to another Good Life program. Well, we've got a dear friend back. We do. Oh, my us. goodness. This man is so anointed. We have Kenny Bridges with us today. Yes. He's got a powerhouse book on the power of unlimited faith. <laughs> so we're excited about this. The book is great. Amen. Unlimited faith. Yes. Yes. Well, I remembered unlimited faith, but I knew there were two words before that. The power of unlimited oh, faith. Oh, yes. All right. And we've got hope. We have Ken Hope with us. Yes, we do. Kenny's singing for us, Good, Good Father. Kenny, you know, he is a good, good father, and he's yes. perfect in all of his ways. Mm. So We're the imperfect ones. <laughs> he's the perfect one. Mm. That's right. Amen. Well, it is good to have Kenan Bridges awesome. back so with us. So good to see you again. Good to see you again. Awesome. Awesome. The, the unlimited faith. Mm. It's not unlimited faith, but it's the power 
of unlimited fame. Yes. And that's what it's all about. And uh, you've got a lot of <laughs> good questions. Well, you did say this is probably one of the most important books. You've written several books, yes. good books. But you said this one's probably one of the most important ones you've written. So why is that? Well, because faith is our foundation. You know, the scripture talks about in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, which I'll talk about that a little bit later. But in the third verse of Hebrews 11, it talks about through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear, which means that everything in our life is established upon God's word. Everything in our life is established, it is structured, it is built upon the foundation of the Word. And really our faith is our trust and confidence in that Word. Jesus says, he that hears my words and do them is like a man that built his house upon a rock. And when the floods came, and I, I hate that he put when in there because that means it's just <laughs> a matter of time. There's going to be a They're flood. They're coming. He says, when the floods come, they beat upon that foundation but the house remained because it was founded upon a rock. So as believers, faith is our first stepping stone, is our first block, our first foundation in building our spiritual house because it's how we connect with God. It's, you know, the word faith simply means <clears throat> confidence or conviction. It's talking about our confidence in God's word, our confidence in his power. You know, if we're going to receive healing, we have to believe he is the healer. If we're going to receive deliverance, we have to believe he is the deliverer. If we're going to receive comfort, we have to believe by faith he is right. the comforter. So everything in our life begins with our faith foundation. And so that's why it's so important because anything that we do in God, anything we do for God, anything God does through us is by faith. Amen. Yeah. Now you told me you just had a new baby. I did. For, well, you didn't, well, but your wife did. Well, technically I did too, because me and my wife are one. So, yes. you right. know, that's the technicality that I, that I get, get away with. That's right. I know you're yeah. going to teach your children the but, Word of God. Amen. And you taught me something that I just never even contemplated. Mm. And that is when that baby is born, comes forth, he is everything he's going to be. That's right. In a miniature <laughs> size and a right. miniature person. That's right. You know, a lot of people don't know. Do you know that your eyes, your eyeballs, are the same size than when you were born? Really? Your eyeballs are the same size they were when you were born. Uh, now, your head was a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, your sockets may have been a little bit smaller, but your eyes were the exact same size wow. as when you were born. So I tell people all the time, our faith is like a muscle. Jesus said, uh, if you have faith as of a grain of mustard seed, uh, you shall speak to this sycamine tree that will be uprooted and cast into the sea. Well, if you think about a mustard seed, we were talking back in the green room, you know, mustard seed is almost the size of a grain of sand. It's very small. But Jesus also said that the kingdom of God is like a man who sowed a mustard seed into the ground. And when he sowed that seed into the ground, it became a great tree. Why? Because the ingredients for the harvest is in the seed. And so when a seed is sown, good. everything that seed will be is already written in the DNA of that seed. The That's same right. way in our faith, everything that we need to do for God Everything God has promised us is in the Word, and it's in, our, it's, it's in the seed of faith inside of us. And we have to mm -hmm. unlock that seed. We have to take the limits off of that seed. We have to exercise our faith. Just like, you know, we were talking in the back, a baby doesn't go for a six-month checkup and get an upgrade on a new <laughs> set of ears or a new skeletal system. Everything right. that they have is there. They have to exercise it. They have to grow it. They have to put it to use, and it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. So the same way, that's the same way with the life of faith. It, it begins to develop as we act on the Word of God, as we meditate on the Word of God, as we confess the Word of God. Our faith gets stronger and stronger and stronger, and we see more and more miraculous things in our lives. 
Amen. That's what I was going to ask you. Talk about the word too, because those two are synonymous. I mean, you you can't have one without the other. You can't. And you you really lay a good foundation in this book. Yeah. With the word in the first chapter and faith in the second. We talk about faith in the first chapter too. Yeah. But those two together, because and you talk about the way God created, with words. Talk about our words. You know, words are so powerful. God created the physical universe through the spoken word. We see in Genesis 1, God said, let there be light. You know, literally light in me be. And when he spoke it, the physical world was brought into manifestation. Uh, in Genesis, I'm sorry, John chapter 1, it talks about in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him and without him, excuse me, was not anything made that was made. So the word of God is the power source for everything supernatural in our lives. The relationship between the word and faith is that the word of God is the foundation of our faith. The scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now it's very powerful uh, kind of relationship. The word for word there is the Greek word rhema. In other words, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the rhema of God. What is the rhema? Yeah. That's what Jesus talked about in Luke chapter 4. You remember he was in the wilderness being tempted by the enemy? Mm -hmm. And he was hungry. And Satan said, if you be the son of God, turn that, that, that stone into some biscuits. Now, I know it said bread, but because <laughs> I'm from the south, I interpret that as biscuits and gravy. So he said, turn that bread into some biscuits. And Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that's in Matthew 4.4 4 and Luke 4.4. 4. 4 4 because 4 4. God has been speaking 4.4 4 to me. Wow, that's awesome. He did awesome. a friend, but he has me too. That's awesome. I see 4.4 4 everywhere. Amen. Glory you know, I had a friend that saw 4.4 saw, saw 4 everywhere, and I go, well, show me how that happens. She said, well, look at that sign right there. We were going down the road. And then about two or three years later, it started happening to me, 4.4 4 mm. everywhere. I'd look at the clock. It may be something about that rhema. We need to catch yeah. up. And so then I felt like the Holy Spirit quickened Matthew 4.4 4 to me and Luke 4.4. 4. I went, wow. Yep. Man shall not live by bread alone, by every word, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yeah. And that's the word of God. That's the word. And we call that the living word. That's what rhema means. In other words, I can read principles and precepts in the Bible, but that alone doesn't bring the transformation that I need in my life. The word has to become alive on the inside of me. It has to be living and active on the inside of me. In other words, God's word is pregnant. Paul talks about it in uh, Romans chapter one. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God that brings salvation. The dunamis, the miracle working power of God. So the word of God is pregnant with God's miracle working power, but we have to get the word inside of us through meditation and allow that word to begin to flourish and produce on the inside of us. This is what God is talking about. You know, I was in Israel last year and we went to a place called Caesarea Philippi. Now, if you've heard of Caesarea Philippi, this is where Jesus had his discourse with his disciples and he asked them the profound question that we see in Matthew 16, who do men say that I am? And I want to say this to somebody because this is so important. You have to have a revelation of who he is for yourself. Amen. Every one of us have to have that moment, a who do men say that I am moment. And Jesus turns Amen. to them at Caesarea Philippi where it was known for what they called the pan. There were many gods and goddesses being venerated in this place. It was a pagan, mm -hmm. really sanctuary. And Jesus says, who do men say that I am? And then he turns to his disciples, he says, now who do you say that I am? And Peter said, surely or truly thou art the Christ, the anointed one in his anointing and a, uh, uh, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you but my father, which is in heaven. And he says, and thou art Peter. Now notice that when Peter had a revelation of who Jesus was, Jesus gave Peter a revelation of his identity. Do you see that? Yeah. Yes. And he yeah. says, and upon this rock, not Peter, 
but the revelation of Jesus Christ, I will build a church. And when that happens, when the revelation of Jesus Christ is our foundation, the gates of hell will not prevail against us. And so this is the key. The, the word has to be revelation inside of you. Jesus has to become more than just a man you hear about in Sunday school to someone who lives inside of you, who lives in your heart. He is the living word. He is the living word. That's why John chapter 1 verse 14 says, and the word was made flesh. God wants us to not only go to church on Sunday, but he wants that word to be made flesh in our lives and every for it to be, be expressed every day, Monday through Saturday, that word becomes alive. You know, um, a great example is healing because when we first started our ministry, we really were big on the whole healing thing. One, because I experienced sickness coming up and many family members were battling with illnesses. And so I was just frustrated. I said, God, there has to be another way. There has to be another way. Your word says that by, our, by your stripes we were healed. I don't see that in my physical experience. Yeah. But the more you meditate on that, the more you ponder that, the more you get that in your spirit, the more that promise becomes alive and active on in, inside of you. And it's more than just something in black and white on the pages. Now it's a living promise in your spirit. And when that word becomes a living promise, it becomes rhema. And that's what Jesus was talking about. We don't just live by the lagos, but we live by the rhema. It has to be alive inside of us. Amen. And when that happens, transformation takes place. Amen. Wow, that's yeah. so good. Yeah. Well, you had a purpose. You said the purpose in writing this book was, I want you to share your well, purpose. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because I talk to millions of people all over the place, either email, internet, <clears throat> or in person. And they have a similar frustration that I had. I was tired of reading about miracles and never seeing them in my life. I was tired of hearing about the power of God but not experiencing it in my life. And in my frustration, I said, God, there has to be more. Lord, maybe I need more faith. I don't, maybe that man or woman of God on Christian television or at that crusade, maybe they just have more faith than I have. That's why they're seeing millions saved. And, but I just believe that God's not a respect of persons. And so I began to seek him. And uh, as I began to seek him, he showed me that the problem was not my lack of faith, but the problem was not exercising the faith that I had. The problem was that I put limits on my faith. How do I do that? I do that by experiences. You know, experiences that we have limit us. What people say, you know, yeah. What, what we're taught in Sunday school or yeah. in cemetery, wherever, whichever one you choose, <laughs> it, it limits us. And so I had to learn to remove the limits off of my faith and to realize that God was more uh, than just an idea. He was a living God. And that's where this book was birthed. Amen. We're going to well. <coughs> take a break. When we come back, I want you to tell all of us how you took the limits good, off good. your faith. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's good. Okay. <laughs> All right, so be thinking about it. I sure will. Yes, sir. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ken Hope will be singing for us right after this. For more information on Pastor Keenan Bridges and to order his books, please visit www.keenanbridges.com. You can also connect with Pastor Bridges on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. And just like Peter and John, you might not by the world's standards be anyone of value, but that does not stop Christ. In those times when you feel the least qualified, that's when people know that it's not through your strength, but only through Christ in you. Will you be like Peter and John and have the courage to be the difference that we so desperately seek in this world? Wait. 
Thank you, Kenny. Soul right, on so. fire. And you know it can happen to you before this program's over. That's right. He'll set you on fire. Yes, Lord. And Kenan Bridges was just telling us about how in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, mm. he got out of depression. Mm. And I want to know how that happened. You know, I, and you were lonely. <laughs> I was very lonely, and um, you know, last born. But it wasn't just that; it was just a lot of things going on. My mother was battling with a lot of sickness, and when I first went to high school, my mother moved out. I came home one day, and my mother had packed all her things and left for some health reasons and stuff. So it was very difficult to deal with because, you know. The way I grew up, your mother was just the bedrock of the family. Yeah. And so when she left, I went through a lot. And I got to this place. I had confessed Christ at nine years old, but no discipleship, no real understanding. And in that moment of desperation, I really cried out to God. And when I did that, I said, Lord, you know, I surrender my heart to you. You know, live inside of me, take control. I know I confessed you before, but I'm ready to surrender to you totally. And when I did that, something just lifted off of me. Uh, and it was very tangible. It wasn't just in my head. When I would go back to school, people noticed it. They said, there's something yeah. different about you. And I didn't realize it at the time, but the Holy Spirit had delivered me from that spirit of loneliness and depression. And you said it was chronic depression. Yeah, it, it, was, it was strong. It was very strong. Yeah. And um, I want to say this because this is so important. It was the late John Wesley who said that the same faith for salvation is, not a, is, is the same faith for miracles. It's not a different faith. You know, a lot of Christians believe that they need to go to the faith factory yeah. and they need to do, you know, do different packages. Oh, I have the salvation package and now I need the healing package or now I need the deliverance package. No, when you receive Christ inside of you, that same faith to receive him and really the miracle of salvation is the same faith that we use for every miraculous manifestation in our lives. It's not a different faith. Now, why is that important? Because when you recognize that you already, you already exercised faith for the greatest miracle in the universe, which is the miracle of salvation, yes. which means yeah. that healing's not a problem. Deliverance is not a problem because you already have the faith <clears throat> that you needed to receive the greatest miracle you could ever receive, which is the Lord Jesus into your heart. And so I didn't understand that what actually took place was a miracle, that it when was. I received the miracle of salvation, <clears throat> I also received the miracle of deliverance from depression. And so it's, it's very, very powerful. And, you know, people ask, 
is God really unlimited? Can God really do anything? And I would ask our, our viewers today, can he really do anything? I mean, we say it all the time. God can do anything. I know God can do anything. But do we really believe that? And I believe we're entering into a season in the body of Christ where not only we're going to need to uh, believe this, we're, we're, we're going to have to believe this. Yeah. Because the times we're coming into, it's time for the church to begin to tap into the power of God yeah. like never before. Miracles are not going to be cute anymore. They're going to be absolutely necessary to sustain the body of Christ. Yes. And I even foresee uh, the miracles of the Bible. Jesus said in John 14, 12, he says, the works that I do, he that believes on me, you shall do also and greater. You know, we haven't yeah. even gotten to the works, let alone the greater. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's time for the church to begin to see the power of God in operation in our lives. Yeah, Amen. that's good. Taking the limits off. Yep, taking the limits off. So what is expectation, the law of expectation? You know, I'm often reminded of the woman with the issue of blood. And it's funny because expectation simply means a confident outlook or, or a confident anticipation of something good happening. You know, another way of looking at it is hope, when we hope for something in the future, something good happening. Well, we read the account of the woman with the issue of blood, and the Bible says that she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. So when, when we have expectation, the first part of the law of expectation says that we have to say something within ourselves. There has yeah. to be an internal dialogue. What is your internal narrative? What are you, what are That's you, good. what are you nursing, right? And rehearsing. And rehearsing. <laughs> Come on now. Because whatever you meditate on, you medicate on. Whatever you meditate on, you medicate on. So what are you rehearsing? What are you medicating on internally? And that becomes your, what I call internal narrative. But the second part of the law of expectation is that what you expect is what will manifest in your life. Mm. Every day I wake up, we have a prayer call every single day, well, Monday through Saturday. And almost every time we do this prayer call, I say something good is going to happen to you today. And they, they say to me, Pastor Keenan, you say that every day. And I say, because something good mm. is going to happen to me every day. <laughs> every day. I expect it every day. When I leave out the house, I say, God, I want to experience your miraculous power today. I want to see a miracle today. I want to see the lame walk. I want to see the sick healed. I want to see blind eyes open. And I want to see souls saved. So when you have that expectation, it's like a magnetic force. When you expect something, you create the magnetic power that attracts what you expect into your life. Now, can I ask you this? Can you expect it more if you stay in the Word of God, knowing what God says about what He's going to do with His kids, well, His see, promises to His children? Now, that, now, that's the key, because revelation produces expectation. That's so good. it is what is revealed that causes us to expect. Why did the woman with the issue of blood say, if I may but touch him? because she had a revelation that he was the Messiah. And because of her revelation that he was the Messiah, she expected her encounter with him to bring change into her life. And I don't know about you, but I refuse to go to church, Brother Bob, Sister Jane, Sunday in and Sunday out, and not see change in my life. Yes. I refuse yeah. to read about a little boy that took a rock, a smooth stone, and knocked down a giant and just go about and let the giants of finance and sickness just stand erect in my life. I refuse to read about a Jesus who heals and be sick in my body. I refuse to read about the power of God and not experience it. So you have to change your expectations. You asked me a question earlier, how did I take the limits off? Well, 2 Corinthians 10 says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and so when I begin to study this thing what you realize with imaginations is that imaginations are really logical arguments in your mind that try to negate the power of God's Word 
How many times have we seen a miracle, somebody get prayed for, maybe even something on TV, and a thought comes in your head, well, that's not real. Or, nah, that can't happen for me. And we don't recognize, but these are imaginations in our mind that need to be cast down. Yeah. And the more you break down the walls surrounding your faith, the more your faith can thrive and operate the way God has created it to. You know, we're supposed to go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Notice that as our faith, as we move from one aspect of faith to another, we move from one aspect of glory to another. In other words, let me give you an example. If I see God do something in one area of my life, it's, it's supposed to strengthen my faith to know that he can do it in another area of my life. Yeah. In other words, if God can pay my Tico <clears throat> bill, then God can also pay my car note. Does that make sense? And yes. if he can do that, he can also heal. If he can heal, he can deliver. If he can deliver, he can save. If he can save, he can set free. And so as we progress in our revelation of who he is through the word of God, it causes our faith to grow, expand, and to explode. And the more that happens, the more we see the miraculous in our lives. Amen. Yeah. So you're saying that there's nothing impossible. Yeah. I, that with sounds God. too biblical, brother. Bob. <laughs> That's somewhere in the Bible. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. There is nothing impossible for him. Well, how important is the law of confession? Very important. Because that is, you've got a whole chapter on very, the law of confession. Very important. What is confession really? You know, the scripture says in Romans chapter 10, if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, who John tells us is the word of God. You can just use the law of substitution there. If we should confess with our mouth, if we will confess with our mouth the word of God and that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved or delivered. So the law of confession, that's the Greek word homologeo. It means to say what has already been said or to say the same thing as another. The law of confession says that what we confess is what we come into agreement with. And what we come into agreement with is what we give permission to operate in our lives. Wow. Whatever you come into agreement with is what you give permission to operate in your life. So the first thing is we have to learn to say what God says. God says I'm healed, so guess what? I'm going to say I'm healed. God says, I'm blessed. I'm going to say, I'm blessed. God says, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm going to say that. And as I say that, I am opening the door for what the word says to be made manifest in my life. It's very important. And if you can get, just, just get believers to stop talking so foolishly, we might can see some miracles if we <laughs> learn to say what the word says as opposed to say what we feel. You know, Kenneth Hagin used to say all the time, you have what you say, but most believers say what they have. Yeah. And when you say what you have, you get what you say. And so we have to learn to say what God says. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Kenneth Hagin was really good. He had a real revelation about that, didn't he? He did. He really Because he did. told the story. It's funny because I was just thinking about that story. <laughs> a story that he said in a book I read years ago, and you just mentioned his name. I thought, wow, just yeah. thinking about him. Yeah. But he talks about this woman. He and his wife went to stay in the home of another pastor and his wife. He was going to preach there. And he said this woman just kept confessing negative things over her husband yeah. constantly. Yeah. He said, it really got to my wife and I because she would say, you know, if this doesn't kill you, this will. Oh, God. If this doesn't kill you, this will. I mean, <laughs> he, he would go across the street and she said, you're going to get killed one day. Walked across that street the way you do it. And then she said, but if that doesn't kill you, this will. And do you know, I think she said a heart attack. He died walking across the street of a heart attack. He really did. I mean, what you say is so important. It is because we are speaking spirits, whether people uh, understand this or not. You know, a lot of people have a problem with this thing. They say, well, that's new age if you talk about confession and all that stuff. No, no. They stole that from the church. That's old age. <laughs> that's old age. I like that, Brother Bob. That's old age. And they, they need to give it back because they've polluted it and corrupted it. But it comes from the word of God. Yes. The Bible says in Job 22, 28, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Powerful. Jesus said it in Mark chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 11. He says that uh, if you have faith in God, have faith in God, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed 
and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He'll have whatever he says. Say do you know that many believers are building mountains in their life really? instead of removing them? Yes. How do they build them? Because they're constantly affirming what they feel. They're constantly affirming what the enemy is doing. You know, I spoke with a lady one time and she says, you know, my child is just horrible. She's the worst child on the face of the earth. Mm. I thought to myself, I know why. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> sakes, lady. <laughs> You're speaking this yeah. over her over and over again. You know, I had a, a growth on my leg one time, and uh, it was just, you know, the first thing that happens when you see something, you, the little doctors and neurologists in your head start yeah. diagnosing <laughs> things. And I said, oh, that's probably this. And, and God said, hush and say what I say. And I said, you know that's what? Good. I curse you by the roots. You are dried up. You're like that mountain in Mark 11. And I speak to you, and I declare that you are removed. Well, guess what? It withered and died. Mm. That's the power of the Word of God. Amen. Now, I had a similar situation years ago. I had a big growth come up right here, and yeah. I was, I'd try to cover it with my bangs, and it kept <laughs> growing and growing. And, and so one day I just looked at it, and I said, in the name of Jesus, I curse you from your source, from your root. And I couldn't believe you said those exact words. Yep. I said, this is what you're going to do. You know, I could only see it by looking in the mirror, so I talked to it. And I'd say, this is what you're going to do. That's you're right. going to dry up. You're going to wither up. You're going to leave my body. That's right. That's Three right. months later, every day I said it, every day when I brushed my teeth, twice a day I'd say it. And I'd say, then it got to the point where I'd say, what are you still doing there? I told you you were a defeated Come on. foe. Come on now. Jesus defeated you at the cross. Good. Now, this is what you're going to do. Mm. And then after that, after three months, about three weeks later, it was, I, you know, because I kept saying, you're going to dry up. Mm -hmm. And then one day I flicked it and half of it went off. And then I was so excited, I said, now the rest of you is not staying, you're leaving too. <laughs> so the next day I flicked the rest of it off and there was a big red place. I said, and no marks, mm. no marks. You'll never know, and nobody mm. will ever know there was a place there. Mm. And then the redness went away wow. and it was gone. Awesome. And it happened a second time. Praise My daughter God. saw something else. She said, mom, you need to go to the dermatologist. And at first I said, yeah, I do. And then the Lord reminded me, he said, did you forget? Mm. What happened with that first one? Come and on. I said, oh, that's right. So I started speaking to that. That's but right. I didn't have to wait three months and then three weeks. Come on. That one was gone in three days. That's right. Awesome. So there's Praise power God. in your words. Power in our words. That's very correct. Amen. Amen. And the thing is, it may happen like your depression left, but it may not. It may yeah. take a while. Yeah. And just don't give up. Yeah. 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 Don't give up. Yeah. Keep talking to it. That's very good. Keep mm -hmm. pronouncing the word of God. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and it will happen. You know, yeah. what has to happen for us as believers is that the word of God has to become our reality and our final authority. Yes. Yeah. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. The first thing that began to change my life is when I realized that the invisible realm was of a greater substance than the physical. Now, I know we don't live like that, but the heavenly realm created the natural realm. And if you just think about it, the thing created is always inferior to the thing that created it. If the word right. created the physical, it means that the word is preeminent over the physical. Oh, I like That's that. And the more you That's meditate good. in the word, mm -hmm. the more the word begins to dominate yeah. your world. You know, I tell people all the time, faith is not ignorance of the natural. Faith is domination over it through the word of God. Amen. Yes. Yeah. We're going to take Amen. a break. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little more about faith. Yeah. If you haven't got a glimpse of it yet, you will before this program <laughs> is over. Amen. Yeah. Ken will be singing for us, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello, I am Terry Tripp, and this is Empower Minute. The Bible is the only book you can read and have the author present while you read it. <laughs> That's what makes this book so awesome. 
As a matter of fact, it isn't a little book. Although the world is trying its best to cause it to be just another religious book, it isn't. It's a force. It's alive. It isn't a book about God. It is God. It's His nature, His thoughts, His DNA, and it's exactly what this generation needs an awakening of. And that's why I thank God for Christian television. This network is proclaiming the power of God's Word, and I believe that is worth supporting. Would you do that right now? Support them financially. Help them proclaim God's Word to this world.
<laughs> Thank you, Kenny. Wow. These songs should set your soul on fire. Should be yeah. a flame begin to run yeah. in your heart. And his last song, we'll see in just a minute, but it's the same way. It'll cause you to set your soul on fire. I'm looking forward to it. Well, now what questions did you have? <laughs> well, uh, we were talking about our words can even determine our future. We can call four things. I just wanted you to talk about that. You know, if you look at Adam in the Garden of Eden uh, in Genesis chapter 2, his first assignment was to name the animals. And the Bible says whatever he named them became the name thereof. It's actually the, the Hebrew word shem. And when the Bible deals with name, it doesn't just deal with, you know, a cute little title for an animal or you're a giraffe or a zebra, but it's talking about purpose, destiny, identity. So Adam, as a created being filled with the Spirit of God, began to speak to those creatures in the garden. And they took form and shape in, in, in a spiritual sense into what they were intended to be. In the same way, we as believers, we shape our world through the words that we speak. You know, the Bible says, God who quickens the dead and calls those things that be not as though they were. Powerful. I never forget I was fasting one day and we were going through a lot in our church. And it was just like a lot of chaos and stuff going on. So I fasted for three days. And I said, God, I need an answer. And fasting and prayer still works, by the way. Yes. I know <laughs> they think that's archaic, you know, this, you know. But anyway, I fasted and prayed. And I, I never forget I was walking through the mall trying to get some food to the end of my fast. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. <clears throat> and, and I said, God, what do I do with all this chaos and this confusion going on in our church? He says, do what I did. Speak to it. Mm. And I said, what do you mean, Lord? He says, when there was darkness, when there was chaos and confusion, I spoke to the darkness and I said, let there be light. Mm, that's good. And he said, you need to do the same thing. So we have the power through the word of God to speak to any darkness, any chaos, any confusion, anything that's outside of the will of God. And we can say, let there be light in Jesus name. And that light will pierce through any chaotic situation in our lives. Mm. Mm, that's good. And you know, <clears throat> I'll say this just really quickly. The question remains, is it possible for us to live in the miraculous every day? Can we live a miraculous life every day? And I believe we can. Yes. And I believe the key is understanding what faith is, the revelation of God's word in action, the revelation of who he is, and acting on that revelation and learning to see the miraculous in our lives. And I, I believe that's, that's key. Amen. Wow. Th there's not a lot of people that I know that live in the miraculous, that live in the supernatural every day. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. That's right. That's right. And, and that's you know, right. that's a very good point, Brother Bob, because one of the most dangerous things we can do is base our faith on somebody else's experience. That's the biggest trap in the things of God. That's right. We have to base our faith on, on what word. God says, his word only. The Bible says that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Yeah. It's not hearing another testimony. That's right. It may increase your faith a little, but if you want real answers, go to the Word. So did you just cover that? That was one of my questions. What is the hearing of faith? You know, Paul talks about it in, in Galatians chapter 3. He says, he that works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? You know, one of the biggest issues in the church is that when we look at the situations and circumstances in our life, we say, well, I can't do that or I can't experience this or I can't, uh, uh, you know, that, that man or woman of God, that person, maybe they know God more, maybe they this, maybe they that. But the truth is, it's not about what you have the ability to do. 
is what you have the ability to hear yeah. that determines your miracle. Amen. Amen. Because faith has ears. Actually, the word here, there's the word of koe. We have an organ of hearing in our ear. The more we hear God speak in a particular area, the more we can experience his power in that area. I'll give you an example. Yeah. We had a healing meeting one night, and the lady came down with a, with a walker. Now, she wasn't letting go of this walker, Brother Bob. She just <laughs> told me right on the spot. And every time I tried to grab her, she would complain about some area of, of her body hurting. But I had ears in my spirit, and I heard a word of healing. So because I heard this word of healing, I said, you know what? I'm going to step out on faith. And boldness took over. I literally snatched the walker out of her hand. Now, now the little lawyers were saying, lawsuit, lawsuit, lawsuit. <laughs> But my faith said, God's going to do something, and he's going to do it now. Mm -hmm. And I snatched the walker out of her hand, and I said, walk in Jesus' name. And she began to walk. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Wow. Well, we've about talked our way out of the program, <laughs> but you've got two minutes to tell the people how wonderful God is. You know, I want to tell you quickly that our God is a supernatural God. There's nothing he can't do. He parted the Red Sea. He created the worlds with the spoken word. He gave sight to the blind. He cleansed the leper. He can do anything. There's nothing impossible to God. And I want you to know, maybe you're dealing with depression. Maybe you're dealing with fear. Maybe you're dealing with chronic loneliness. I want to speak this into your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, every person on the sound of my voice, they're free today. Let Jesus into your heart. The impossible will be possible to you if you will believe. Simply say yes to God. Father, right now we declare your power is being manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I believe it. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> All you have to do is receive it. Just accept it. Let God do the work in your life. That's right. Amen. Amen. And now Ken is going to sing, Lord, I need you. And that's all you have to say. It's, Lord, I need you. Amen. God bless Come you. Come into my heart. Come into my life right now. Ken. Grace is found is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. Jesus, you're my hope and strength. 